Welcome back. Today we're going to profile one of the most notorious killers in Boston Underworld history, the legendary Joe McDonald of Winter Hill. Joe McDonald of Winter Hill was feared by the most dangerous of men. He was a close-range assassin, preferring a 38 caliber pistol. He didn't like masks. He wanted his victims to see his face. Joe served in World War II in the Navy, and he was aboard the ill-fated USS Indianapolis that, after delivering the atomic bomb that would be dropped on Nagasaki to end World War II, his ship was struck by a torpedo and sank. Those sailors that did not die in the initial explosion or in the sinking ship died of dehydration, exposure, and worst of all, were eaten alive by sharks. For days as he struggled to survive, Joe listened to the screams of his fellow sailors. Joe's brother was aboard the ship, but he did not survive. After the war, Joe never spoke about his experience. For the rest of his life, he would be prone to depression and would go on week-long benders where he would drink around the clock and talk about suicide, which was very taboo for that time, especially among Irish Catholics. He would hole up in the doghouse, which was the bottom floor of his family triple-decker, where Winter Hill gang members would congregate and where he would hole up for his drinking bitches. One of his family members would eventually walk down to Marshall Motors, where the gang members congregated, and ask some of the guys to come up and get him to stop drinking. He was incarcerated during the majority of the gang war, but at one point while he was at a minimum security prison, he walked off. He was a fugitive just long enough to try to kill Punchy McLaughlin and fail before being captured and finishing a sentence. So this was the first attempt on Punchy McLaughlin where half his jaw was shot off by a shotgun. It was Joe McDonald. He was a fugitive and he tried to kill him the first time. So after the war, Winter Hill was the victor and they were number two in the city behind the Italian Mafia. And Joe Mack was their number one killer. For the most part, Winter Hill were normal guys. They had families, jobs, they weren't full-time gangsters. And if the war hadn't escalated the way it did, half these guys probably wouldn't have become such hardened criminals. But not Joe. He was a killer through and through. Between Joe and John Mortarano, the other gang member, who was also a stone-cold killer, they racked up more than 20 murders. Joe also liked to team up with Jimmy Sims, a lifelong friend from Winter Hill and supposedly the best getaway driver in the whole city of Boston. Some of his most notorious hits were against the CPA mob hanger-on John Callahan, who liked to hang around with mob guys but was still a legitimate businessman. Well, he hung around a little too long and he crossed a couple of the guys from Winter Hill, mostly Whitey Bulger, and he ended up being killed by Joe McDonald and stuffed into a trunk in southern Florida and left a rot in 100 degree weather. They tried to set it up to look like it was a drug deal gone bad and it was actually Cuban uh, cocaine dealers that killed him, not Winter Hill. And another one of his most notorious hits was against legitimate business owner Roger Wheeler, who they were trying to muscle out of his legitimate business and take over. Um, after a round of golf at a prestigious uh, country club in Oklahoma City, he was walking to his car and Joe McDonald walked up behind him and put two bullets in the back of his head. Another instance, Joe tried to rob a man for a half a million dollars worth of coins and um, as they struggled, Joe shot and killed him. After that, he went on the lam and he was hiding in Greenwich Village in New York. Um, his friend Jimmy Sims from Winter Hill stayed with him from time to time. Um, the Winter Hill gang was very scattered at this time. Joe was on the lam, John Maltarano was on the lam, Jimmy Sims was on the lam, and Whitey Bulger and Steve Fleming had muscled their way in and basically taken over the rackets. So Joe expected help from Winter Hill, but Whitey and Stevie weren't about to send any help. Everybody was expendable to them. <clears throat> so basically, Joe was asked out. Someone eventually leaked his whereabouts, whether it was Whitey or another FBI um, informant, Ricky Castucci, which he was in contact with while he was living in New York. So anyways, he was on a train back to Boston from New York and he ended up getting arrested. So you think with all these murders and being one of the most cold-blooded killers in Boston history that Joe McDonald died in prison. But as he suffered from health problems at an old age, he was actually released and died a free man. So I hope that you enjoyed this hopefully unbiased profile of one of Boston's most notorious hitmen and cold-blooded killers, Joe McDonald of Winter Hill. If you like my content, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. I'll be coming with more content very soon. Thank you very much.